Lion Linda, Hi. welcome to Up and Coming. Thank you. So Ramadan Mubarak firstly. Ramadan Mubarak. I do get anxiety. Like I am 23 still. Yeah. It's scary sometimes because you're at a point where it's like, if I don't grow, like what's going to happen? Am I going to fail? Am I going to fall? Because I guess the perception would be, you know, you just married into money or like, you yeah. know, you're just... You know, no, a exactly. gold digger or something like that's such a perception and that's what i love about it is that i don't have to prove myself yeah the people who know me know what what feeling. would failure be for you wasn't handed it yeah um my husband wasn't handed it and we both built it it's inside here yeah, yeah. testing one two three you're tuned in to up and coming the pod where we discuss everything that is up and coming with your girl kiran fatima uh -huh. Linda, Hi. welcome to Up and Coming. Thank you. So Ramadan Mubarak, firstly. Ramadan Mubarak. So is this your first Ramadan in the Middle East? Yes, and it's been amazing. I wanted to ask, so like, like, what are you doing for Ramadan differently here compared to where are you from? Okay, so where I'm from, I cook every meal for iftar here I obviously don't have to. There's Deliveroo. Yeah. Um, new restaurants every day. So I haven't cooked at all this Ramadan. So is this your first one in a Muslim country as well? Yeah. Do you yeah. feel the vibe? I love it. You feel it in the air. Have you, um, have people told you about that? Like, have you gone to any of like the iftars, the tents or anything? I did. Yeah. I went to one in Emirates Palace and I went to one in the address. I went tonight actually. Ah, did you like it? I loved it. Are they as grand as like you imagine them to be as like everyone? Because when I was moving, everyone's like, you have to wait for the tents, but I moved in COVID. And when mm. I saw them, I'm like, oh wow, this is like a full on wedding. Yes. Uh, the one I went to in the palace had like a custom perfume station. And I was like, I've, of course. I have to go to that one. <laughs> of course Dubai would do that. I expect nothing less. So everyone knows your online persona. You kind of blew up with the whole, what is it like? I don't want to only say housewife of Dubai, kind of real housewife, but then also like lavish spending everything. So yeah. before we get into that, I want to go to your background. Like who is not Lion Linda, but Linda Nasir Dean Andre, Andrade. 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 I'm sorry with the Latina. I'm oh, going to try to get better. Of course, of course. Um, uh, my dad built up his life from zero, literally as an immigrant. And because so of that, that yeah immigrant struggle in america yeah and because of that like i've never looked at a conventional way of living okay like i remember one time in the morning i asked him like why are you still here it's like 11 he's like i'm the boss i can do whatever i want and i was like okay and i was like 12 yeah so i was like i want this life yeah and i just decided to start a business when I was 16. What did you start? Like, what's the business? I started a clothing business. Like everybody, okay. everyone does a clothing okay, business. Okay, no one does. I, honey, I didn't do a clothing business. So like, <laughs> what type of clothing? At the time, I felt like everybody was doing it probably because that's what I was seeing. Um, I was just selling like cute, trendy clothes. Okay. And it was like a little thing. I think like I didn't make very much from it, but I resonated a lot with my husband at the time. It wasn't my husband. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> but the entrepreneurial spirit he's very ambitious so i feel like that's what got us closer together okay so wait when did you meet him so like you're 16 you're starting a business a clothing business have no idea i'm assuming how to even get into it yeah and then are you dating him like wh where did you like meet this random guy so i met my husband at the gym and we were inseparable since that day. what's the age difference if you don't mind me asking? we're four years apart okay yeah i met him when i was around like 17 18 okay yeah and we have been together since then and he was drawn to me because of my ambition, like the energy. I was drawn to him for the same reason. I could never imagine being with someone less than my dad. Well, of course, growing up Muslim, I already knew like I can't mess around. You know, yeah. the, 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 the goal is marriage and that's it. Your values were pretty much like. Yeah, there was. And I was the oldest. I had to set the standard for my brothers, too. Yeah. Um, so growing up, like that's how I had the mentality. And I told my husband very, very early on, like this has to be marriage or nothing okay. and i was like i don't know how he's gonna take that yeah. and when he converted shortly after it was an eye-opener for me and he took me seriously and i took him very seriously so okay walk me through now you got married at how was it like with your i know you didn't have that many friends 
but you getting married at 19 did you have any other people in your life that were married at that age no even okay. now I don't have any married friends and now you're 23 I'm 23 now and how like did you feel lonely at the time were you like who do I like look up to who am I gonna talk to I didn't feel lonely um because my husband really was my best friend at the time okay and still now um I didn't feel lonely but I did feel like I was paving a new path okay like I felt like I was going into uncharted territory does marriage suit you I love marriage I I don't know what I would do without marriage do you think you could have been that like single girl or whatever like at 23 24 like doing it alone no I'm too soft to be single (laughs) honestly I I don't know how to answer that question like I got married so young like I never had like a you mm -hmm. know a hoe phase and I really don't feel like I'm missing out because when you're dating so many people and you're not getting commitment back there's no deeper meaning you're emptying your cup you're giving yourself away spiritually and especially like if there's sex on the table yeah um that's a energy exchange and it's forever imprinted on you i think the other person's energy it never leaves you and then at the end of the day like you have a lot of damaged people i think are people who have just given, 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 and there's nothing left to show for it. Or when you do meet your soulmate, let's say like they, they didn't do that. You've had more experience and you've given yourself away so many times that it means, I don't know, like you're not on the same level with them. Yeah. I don't want to say like it means less, but you're not on the same level as them. It's different because f- to them, like you're, everything and then to you it's not you know yeah so yeah I'm not a fan of hookup culture and if I wasn't married I wouldn't be a part of hookup culture I would try to get married yeah (laughs) yeah um also God knows best and God said to just get married yeah he did (laughs) yeah he really did for a reason because you'll just be hurt otherwise what are some certain principles that you kind of brought in or some rules or like of the type of wife you want to be is it a 50 50 household just because of because you got married so young I feel like a lot of people might have the perception that you know not anymore after this I don't even have that perception but I just want to ask the question you know you can get into a pretty effed up situation because you're so young yeah you can be not used and abused but you know what I mean like you know what or like you know what are your personal boundaries or um so no it's not 50 50 um he like in terms of money Mm -hmm. of course he takes care of the household like in my culture that's the standard and did you set that standard from the beginning I didn't really try to it was just natural for him okay and for me I really like that yeah it it all like you do have to find a good man too because when you get married so young you are giving up your youth and you're you're being vulnerable so it does take like due diligence and to see what kind of man he is Mm -hmm. and like of course don't marry someone that you don't feel you can trust with your life and and you don't really know that when you're younger because you know i was having this conversation with my friend and she got married at 21 and she's now divorced um but she's like you know 33 and she was like you know my sisters i have like six older sisters none of them told me that like he needs to pay for dinner she's like you know from the beginning till the end it was a 50 50 thing um she's like there were so many things i wish someone would be like actually that's not how it's supposed to be yeah and you know i didn't see the signs but she's like now looking back i'm like what the hell was i like dealing with and she's like i was just young when you're like 19 yeah like i'll buy the movie tickets you'll buy the popcorn yeah but like moving forward how do you like set that standard and she's like we just never set it in the 10 years it's hard to if you've already done that yeah yeah um do you see that like in your other marriages like you know of like other couples that you've seen or like you know what do you guys do to make sure like yours is so at this point um the amount of like money that we've started to make money isn't really like a question anymore Mm -hmm. like it would be ridiculous if i paid the bill like why yeah first of all we have the joint bank account anyways Mm -hmm. so if i paid the bill that's like he's paying them yeah but um yeah i feel like if somebody's in a marriage where it's already like that you would just have to let them know that when you get pregnant you're doing it all on your own and they have to pay the bills 
because you can't work and that's just the nature of life yeah i feel like you're in a codependent relationship yeah i think so codependent like i think i depend on him more than he does on to me yeah and you prefer it that way yeah i do yeah. because when he does need me like it's abundant it's stacking up i'll give you everything all my time like yeah. all my energy it's here like now that you're married you're like this young you guys are a young couple how are you navigating california like the first year was mostly wedding planning we got okay. married the islamic way with the court and everything and then it was planning the wedding so it was just wedding planning wedding planning wedding planning and then after that i was like what do i do with my life i started a new business that's what i ended up doing after i realized i was bored like there's nothing yeah like i just got married the wedding's done now what no school either either i started a new business it was a weight loss clinic that's so interesting like you're bored in your marriage and i'm not bored sorry wrong word but like you know, you're newly married <laughs> yeah. and you're like okay what to do what to look forward yeah. to next and your immediate thought is let me start a business yeah that really is like that's very telling of like i guess like who you are thank you yeah at that point it was like easier to do that than get a job honestly because i've never been in that my mom never worked my mm -hmm. dad didn't have a job and you didn't want to go back to school no not at the time no okay yeah so i started a business um it was a weight loss clinic because i went to one before my wedding okay and i was like i love this vibe why can't i do it what and is I, a weight loss clinic so i was doing like um laser fat okay. loss like not me like i gotcha okay it's yeah. one of those like okay. outside and skin tightening uh -huh. um cryotherapy i had a sauna in there too okay. we we started like one by one first i okay. bought like one machine that was like an initial investment i profited off of it to the point where i reinvested okay and it, i built it from the ground up i didn't just do like a grand opening it was very small. Like, I literally started in my house. Okay. And was yeah. it working then? Like, were you getting clients? Yeah. I was getting clients, like, very little here and there. Okay. And that, like, grew. I went from my house to a one-bedroom shared office space. And then from there, it was a two-bedroom shared office space. Then I got my own office space and more machines. And I hired more staff. It was, like, like a snowball. And how long did this whole, like, kind of take, like for it to take uh two years i want to say that's a very short yeah. amount of t period of time wow yeah i started at the perfect time where there weren't many out there and it was like a, this newest thing like oh m sculpt i had that machine uh the abs one yeah yeah it was like the newest thing so after i started my business two years later i opened up my storefront um two years into is it is that amazon storefront no a real storefront like a real like a brick and mortar yeah brick and mortar oh shit look yeah. at you okay With, like my sign on the thing on, okay. on the wall and that was in two th that was literally right before covid so then covid happened that's the worst business to be in after covid lifted its ban i went hardcore and then my business blew up and i was starting to meet with investors who wanted to buy my business but I would still be able to open another one. And it was just like a whole new level of success that I've never seen before in my little weight loss clinic. Yeah, uh, Like people wanted to spend like a lot of money to buy it. And my husband also like was very successful in his own way, mashallah. mashallah. He opened up, he owns an AI software that trades for you. So making knowledge kind of dumb. Like you don't even wow. need it. So the software trades for you. Um, he owns a credit business. He owns um, the academy still. He owns a website building business. Just so much. And that's when I decided to step away and just focus on, you know, housewife yeah. stuff. So my business, the, the story, I ended up hiring a manager and that was now self-sufficient. After that, I did lean more into the housewife side because okay. I... I want. I wanted to. Um, I was getting stressed in the business. It grew to a point that I was getting stressed, and I don't want to be like a stressed wife. And it's going to affect him. It's going to affect the household. So I took a step back, and it's still. It stayed that way. What is the a housewife to you? A housewife is very valuable um, okay. because you're the foundation of the household. You're the 
peace in the storm. You're the calm to the storm. If you're a good housewife. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a bad one, obviously, you're the storm. Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, but when you have kids, especially, you're watering the family. Like, you're, you're probably feeding everybody. You're raising children. You're growing old with someone. Um, helping them in their day-to-day. Making them feel better. So it's very important. Um, and if you were working at a job or if you were in corporate, it would be hard because you just spent all day, <clears throat> yeah. you know, kind of... Just, yeah, being in your masculine, if being anything. Being in your masculine just, um, and, like, emptying your cup. I don't really know yeah. another word for no, it. No, but I agree. I agree. Because you come home tired, and then, y- you know what I mean? Yeah, you just, you can't yeah. give that energy. Yeah, and you can't operate from a place of, like, low. Like, it has yeah. to be, like, abundant. Like, you're giving love, care affection i guess since your initial thing was like i'm bored and i want to start a business then you were getting super stressed and you're like let me step away so were you afraid that maybe when you become a housewife again you're gonna get bored so i am a housewife now okay and i'm not bored because of tiktok but i also decided to go back to school so i'm in school now and i also feel like it's an honor to stay home Okay. And I'm blessed. So I don't look at it as like I'm bored anymore. Yeah. What yeah. are you in school for? To be a doctor. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I'm not in med school yet, but I'm finishing up a program now to where I can get my bachelor's of science and then apply to med school. And that so interesting. I, I need to use a better word that like you can't sit like still. <laughs> Like you can't. And it's 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 amazing. My husband says the same thing. He's like, make up your mind. Yeah, but you sh- but you shouldn't have to. And it seems like it's such a vast variety of what you're doing. Yeah. Like med school, entrepreneur, housewife. I mean, I am still like finding myself. I'm still 23. Yeah. And I wanted to ask that. Like, are you like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I am kind of seeing now a more straight line. So my med spa that I opened. Okay. I wasn't a doctor. So of course I couldn't do Botox and filler or any of that stuff. So now what I'm doing is to expand that business So it's like all connected, I think. So you're super entrepreneurial. What is advice that you give to people younger than you because you're so young or your age or older business and relationship wise since Marshall, you're successful in both? Thank you. For business, I want to say you can honestly be successful in anything. Like it's crazy, like a car wash or lash business or anything. And it really does have to be something you're passionate about. But it does or it does? It does. Okay. Uh, starting out, after you have like more money, you don't have to be passionate. You can just throw yeah. money at, at more money, basically. But a quote that I use is solve problems for people and okay. you'll be rich. So the problem I solved was weight loss and pudgy areas on the body and tight, like tightening skin. Um, that was the problem I solved. And a lot of women wanted my help with that. And is it only women you saw? mostly i had okay. some men come in but it was mostly women okay that was the problem i solved um the the problem my husband solved was confusion in investing he solved that problem was with with knowledge but yeah um uh, and then with relationships believe what they show you yeah believe what they show you like if they show you like actions speak louder than words if they show you they want a 50 50 relationship and that's what you want then go for it. If you don't want that, then don't try to change him because no one's going to change. Imagine how hard it is to change yourself. You definitely can't change another person. Yeah. I have a question. So you're very soft, like you said, like, you know, kind of like a soft girl, especially when it comes to like relationships. When you're in business, are you just as soft? Are you like, what's your personality? What's your corporate personality? So with my staff, yeah, I'm soft, which... Could, could be a good and bad thing. I was walked over a little bit okay. by my staff, especially I was younger than them too. The boss was younger than them. Yeah. But um, I hired a manager who like respected me and then she was obviously older and she helped me out with that. But when it comes to the ambition, like it's aggressive because I want more for myself and more for my family. And I only have one life and I don't want to waste it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? My husband and my dad. For sure. You should see my dad. He's way more impressive. I would love to see him because just even seeing like your ambition, it's like, it's very, 
it's very inspiring. Yeah, it is. Thank you. And so as a woman in business, have you felt that you've ever seen any prejudices towards you, California or here or no, not so much? No, not too much. Yeah, especially not in California, probably more here. Okay. But in California, it's very like equal. I want to say like pretty normal. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. And are your other friends also doing businesses like you or like, do you know any other people like you? I do surround myself with people similar to me. Okay. And you're Does that make a difference? Yeah. Your network is your net worth. That's what they your say. Your network is your that's net worth. Yeah, that's been my motto forever. Your okay. network is your net worth. And um, all of my friends are doing amazing things with their lives. And we all learn from each other. Okay. Uh, I actually want to know, walk me through like a conversation or like a dinner table conversation, you and your husband. Like, what do you guys talk about? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, did you book those flights? We travel a lot. Um, so did you book those flights? How did that one business call go? Did your video go viral? Um, Do you guys discuss your business woes with each other? No, or like we I don't. Really? Not, we used to. And we're, he's an Aries too. We have the same birthday. Ah, oh shit. Yeah, we have the same birthday. <laughs> Fire. Yeah, very fiery. Yeah. So when we were discussing our business with each other, it was getting like sticky. Like his advice, if I didn't take it, he'd be like, why didn't you take my advice? And I'm like, why didn't you take my advice? And I didn't like it very much. Okay. It was putting me in like a masculine energy. Okay. And like, why? It's just so stupid. So we don't talk about it anymore. But... Like, I'll let him know if a video goes viral. He'll let me know, like, how an important call went. Um, but his business is his business, and what I do is my business. But, yeah, at the end of the day, like, I don't have to pay the bills. Like, he's my husband. Do you take advice from, like, your dad? Or, like, then who do you take business acumen, like, if you're going through it? I know, it's like, if you're really going through it, you can definitely ask. But yeah, who, who are your, like, advisors or... Um, my, so I have, uh, I made business friends who are in the same okay. field as me. They ask me for advice. I ask them for advice and also just experience. Like you learn from past mistakes, experience, or you just don't even know what to do and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know everything. Do you internalize time. things when it comes to business or relationships? Like, what do you mean? Or do you talk them out? Um, internalizing would be like you just kind of feel the feeling think a th through keep it to yourself um, not with my husband I do okay. internalize in everything but with him like I do talk everything with him yeah mm -hmm. I do sorry go no, ahead no no go for it I do have a lot of anxiety sometimes okay and I only am really comfortable talking to him when it comes time to feel anxious I guess so in your time. head what was that moment when you're like we made it so my husband always tells me like don't ever settle like keep going I think I did I, I did feel like I made it um I took my family on a vacation oh, sweet. like a year ago and I was like this is really nice because like and his mom came too they've never left America and we just did that for them and it was like a little thing it was small and I was like that's that's amazing like we made it but of course he tells me to keep yeah keep like obviously growing we all know you as like this chick on instagram or yeah. tiktok just like buying these like the chanel bag we all want yeah and then you're sitting here telling me like at 21 i had like a shared office or like i had this much stuff and i'm like doing this and i'm like at 21 she wasn't because i guess the perception would be you know you just married into money or like you yeah. know, you're just you no, know, a exactly. gold digger or something like that's such a perception and that's what I love about it is that I don't have to prove myself yeah the people who know me know and the people but do you not want people to know I feel like what what is that gonna like do if they mm -hmm. know I mean they could know but at the end of the day like people love the braggy um extravagant lifestyle and I really think it's because it's an escape from real life okay that's what I hear all the time is that it's like a fantasy and when you open my TikTok, it's like a different world. Yeah. And that's why I just keep it up. So then I guess, yeah, that was my next thing. Like, so you want this perception online then? It, it's interesting because I don't like the idea I'm building of myself right now. How did it start? Like, how were you like, let me just make this video? Like, was it a joke? 
yeah, initially? Like original? a personal one. Well, I so I did have like this one day that was just so Dubai, so okay. glamorous. I documented it. And when I posted it, I was like, how do I explain my day? I don't want to sound boring. And there's already out there on TikTok, like the bragging voice. So I was like, maybe, maybe try that. I don't think it'll work because my voice yeah. is so calm that I don't think it'll you, you work. You have a really nice voice. Thank like you. I, I feel like Calm app probably has your voice before like going to sleep. Like oh, it's you're a very so nice. I'm voice, so though. shy, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I was like, it's not going to work. My voice is so like calm. Mm-hmm. And it, like I posted it and I woke up to 5 million views. Wow. So I was like, oh my God. And I bet you're like, let's just do this for even like jokes or whatever. Let's and I, just continue yeah. it. I posted another one the next day and it got like 5 million views after a week. And I was like, oh my God. And then I got so many um, like new followers and support and like it was just kept going. Yeah. So is that, I guess, like your typical quintessential Dubai day, what you're showing? Or is it more just like these are random days you have? They're random. It's not every day, of course. Like yeah. I, when I went to the diamond necklace thing, it was because um, I saw them on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I messaged them. I was like, I'd love to come see like, your collection. And I was trying to go see just like quickly, you know. Um, and then they had me come in sit down and they wanted me to try on a lot of stuff so they could take pictures and I was like I love it let me take pictures too yeah yeah and I do love shopping so originally like I never showed that stuff and after this video went viral I was like let me show it more of it um I guess people like it people do like it yeah but people also like to hate yeah do you feel like you're getting a lot of negative perception online? I do, yeah. But I think everybody does. Everyone does, yeah. yeah. How do you deal with it? Um, I honestly just think that it's not me they're mad at. It's something in their life. And yeah. I ignore it. Yeah. Like, my comments sometimes give me a lot of anxiety on TikTok. The comment section? Do you actually read through it? I do sometimes. Well, I have to. If I open up my TikTok, it's, like, right there. When I go to my notifications. Yeah. Um, or if someone's arguing, like, I'm interested. Like, what are you guys arguing about? Yeah. <laughs> it's always funny. Does the arguments in my comment section. But um, I do get anxiety. Like, like you... I am 23 still. Yeah. And, like, it's scary sometimes. Because you're at a point where it's like, if I don't grow, like, what's going to happen? Am I going to fail? Am I going to fall? You know what I mean? Are you afraid of failing? I, I am, yeah. I am what, afraid of failing. What would failure be for you? Um, God forbid, like divorce. Okay. It would be sickness, like getting sick in okay. life. So I do try to be healthy. So it would be anxiety over kind of those things you can't control. Yeah, things you can't control. Sickness, um, losing my husband. Monetary failure. Is that something you would consider... Yeah, monetary failure, but also I I know if I did fail monetarily, like I would be back up. That's so interesting. And it would all come back because I wasn't handed it. Yeah. Um, my husband wasn't handed it, and we both built it. It's inside here. You yeah. Know? So that's not a huge fear. Um, obviously, if you're is losing like the love of my life, he's my best friend. If that like if a divorce did happen. Yeah. Uh, if I like never have kids, that's a fear. If I um, go to hell, <laughs> <laughs> it's Ramadan. That's that's valid. If I let if I let God down, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. How important is religion in your life for you? The most important, really. Yeah. What are you, do you consider yourself spiritual or religious? It's religious, yeah. Okay. I do practicing. I do, yeah. I I do donate zakat charity. Um, that's a big question on my TikTok. Yeah. Uh, it's part of my religion and I want to, uh, charity doesn't decrease your wealth. It doesn't. Especially like in the Quran, it says that. Yeah. Um, so I I love charity. Um, I haven't gone to Hajj yet, but I want to. Other than that, yeah. Would you consider opening like a charity? I know you're like super young now, but like, is that like one of your long 10 year plan goals? That's so funny. My husband opened a charity. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did. It's called Motive Pack. Okay. Um, it's basically providing backpacks 
with necessary supplies and motivational pieces to children in like low income cities and stuff is it here like where it's in california los angeles okay yeah nice so it's like motivational like stickers and pencils and things like that and then like snacks clothing shoes backpacks all right linda it was such a pleasure having you on the pod it was so nice to talk to you thank you i just feel like you really showed like a 12th dimension that just none of us saw coming it's so refreshing to see someone as young as you successful mashallah beautiful everything and i really hope like you know I, we get to have you again soon on the i would love to be here again yeah, definitely yeah. and so if anyone wants to keep in touch or whatever uh is it just following you on on the socials yeah my instagram and my tiktok's lion linda two a's at the end and that's it. are we gonna see more than the housewife content i couldn't think of the word <laughs> um yeah for now it's just the like obnoxious dubai housewife comedy vibe but I think I do want to go more into like a classy way of living. Girl, you're the definition of classy. So. You're so nice. You're very classy yeah. yourself. Okay. By the way. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I want to go more into like a classy vibe because right now it's not that classy. It's very like, what is she saying? Yeah. But yeah. But now to... I'm going to watch your videos and I think everyone is too. We're in on the joke. Yeah. We're in on it. Yeah. So love it. Yeah. I love that some people have started to get it and some people who don't get it, they they get it it. they get it yeah they either get it or they don't yeah yeah all right this was fun thank you thank you so much all right we're done